ancient race of white giants of native legends were wiped out. These are legends of many tribes of Native Americans. And uh, the ancient race of white giants, several native tribes passed down legends of a race of white giants who were wiped out. And we'll take a look at a few such legends, including those among the Choctaw and the Comanches of the United States, down to the Manta even of Peru. Now, let's remember that uh, we even have the white, uh, well, the, the giants of Patagonia here as an example of the uh, explorers around 16th, 17th century who described them as being uh, giants of uh, human uh, proportions, but very huge. And of course, giants on record from American history and uh, all over in the various parts of the United States, Canada, even down to Peru. Now, the Choctaw. Horatio Bardwell Cushman wrote in his 1899 book, History of the Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Natchez Indians. He said, the tradition of the Choctaws told of a race of giants that once inhabited the now state of Tennessee and with whom their ancestors fought when they arrived in Mississippi in their migration from the West. Their tradition states the Nahulo, the race of giants, was of wonderful stature. The tradition of the Choctaws told of a race of giants that once inhabited the now state of Tennessee, according to Horatio Bardwell Cushman. Cushman said, Nahulo came to be used to describe all white people, but it originally referred specifically to a giant white race with whom the Choctaw came into contact when they first crossed the Mississippi River. Nahulo were said to be cannibals whom the Choctaw killed whenever they, uh, the opportunity rose. Then the Comanches, chief rolling thunder of the Comanches, a tribe from the Great Plains, gave the following account of an ancient race of white giants in 1857. He said, innumerable moons ago, a race of white men, 10 feet high and far more rich and powerful than any white people now living, here inhabited a large range of the country extending from the rising to the setting sun, in other words, from east to west. Their fortifications, he said, crowned the summits of the mountains, protecting their populous cities situated in the intervening valleys. So where are these fortified uh, summits? And we remember that in ancient times, uh, for example, ancient Greece, uh, even uh, uh, ancient Israel, they used to have the Acropolis, up on the mountains. And that's where the people would flee to for protection in case of um, enemies attacking to them. It's like a fort, a fortified fort, a walled fort, okay? So I guess these white, uh, white giants were also doing this throughout America. Now, where is the archeology span of America to go and find these things according to what the chiefs, Chief Rolling Thunder of the Comanches here says? So he says, innumerable moons ago, a race of white men 10 feet high, rich and powerful, far more rich and powerful than any white men love living. They excelled every other nation, he says, which was flourishing either before or since in a manner of cunning handicraft. They were brave and warlike, ruling over the land they had wrested from its ancient possessors with a high and haughty hand. Compared with them, the pale faces of the present day were pygmies in both art and arms, he said. The chief explained that when this race forgot justice and mercy and became too proud, the great spirit, meaning the divine God, wiped it out and all that was left of their society were the mounds still visible on the tablelands. So now, just remember, even the ancient Greeks used to build their mounds. Uh, uh, the mounds were filled with the... Uh, there were tombs, in other words. The mounds are tombs, even today. The tomb of Marathon is a tomb with the uh, uh, the Athenian oplites who uh, found their demise uh, against the Persians in the Battle of Marathon, about uh, 500 BC. So going back to this, this account was documented by Dr. Donald Panthers Yates, a researcher and author of books on Native American history on his blog. And uh, now we go to the Navajo. Yates also writes of the Starnake P. 
people of Navajo legend describing them as, quote, a regal race of white giants endowed with mining technology who dominated the West, enslaved lesser tribes, and as strongholds all through the Americas, they were either extinguished or went back to the heavens. The Navajo, he says, were a regal race of white giants with mining technology. You must remember around the Great Lakes area, uh, they had mined copper and re removed most of the copper in the Great Lakes area. Let's remember the Great Lakes area also had the Native Americans with the ancient Greek Minoan DNA. Now going here the, uh, concerning, concerning the ne next uh, leg uh, tribe, the Manta. In 1864, Pedro de Cieza de Leon wrote in Chronicle of Peru, about legendary giants described to him by the Manta indigenous people. Quote, there are, however, reports concerning giants in Peru who landed on the coast at the point of Santa Elena. The natives relate the following tradition, which had been received from their ancestors from very remote times. From the knee downwards, their height was as great as the entire height of an ordinary man, Pedro de Cieza de Leon, conquistador, said. There arrived on the coast in boats made of reeds as big as large ships, a party of men as such size that, from the knee downwards, their height was as great as the entire height of an ordinary man, though he might be of good stature. Their limbs were all in proportion to the deformed size of their bodies, and it was a monstrous thing to see their heads, with hair reaching to the shoulders, their eyes were as large as small plates. Leon said that the sexual habits of the giants were revolting to the natives, and heaven eventually wiped out the giants because of those habits. Paiutes. The Paiutes are said to have an oral tradition that told of red-haired white cannibals about 10 feet tall, the red-haired giants of the Paiutes that we know of, who, uh, who lived in or near what is now known as Lovelock Cave in Nevada. It's unclear whether this oral tradition about the so-called Siteka giants existed or if it was an exaggeration or distortion of their legends made after the Paiutes were mostly killed or dispersed in 1833 by an expedition by explorer Joseph Walker. Brian Dunning of Skeptoid explored Paiutes legend and found no mention of the Siteka being giants. It seems there was, however, a people who practiced cannibalism who lived in Lovelock Cave. Human remains have been found there and few of the human bones had the marrow removed, suggesting the marrow was eaten. Cannibalism seems to have been a rare practice among these people, however. The remains do have red hair, but this may be because black hair can turn red with time. Now, miners unearthed the artifacts in Lovelock Cave in 1912, leaving them in a pile before eventually contacting the University of California. Anthropologist Llewellyn L. Loud traveled from the university to the site to investigate. It is commonly agreed that excavation of the site was not handled well, and certainly not up to modern standards. But some proponents of the Sitika giant theory say researchers have deliberately covered up any giant remains that were found there. This was by Tara MacIsaac on Humans Be Free. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.